Hey, hey, so good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining me for the first in this series of Facebook Lives I'm going to do that are, I've basically titled Lessons on Leadership. And um, I, I, I title it that. I have got a, a two day summit coming up in Orlando on November 15th and 16th. And a lot of what I'm, I'm doing here is really the topics that I'll be covering during that two day seminar. So this is free. It's, it's, it's for me to get your feedback, to get your um, questions and to to help, basically to help you grow and develop. And what I do by that is, as well as helping you grow and develop, it helps me to grow and develop too. It helps me to offer the best service possible for um everybody that I come into contact with so you know if you've been following me before you know that my um, my mission or my why statement is to add value to other people so that they can become the best versions of themselves and that includes you but it includes everybody that you serve too so I'm here to serve you to enable you to serve other people so let's start by asking first of all what is leadership well John Maxwell says that leadership is influence, nothing else. I believe there's more to leadership than just influence, but influence is, is something without influence, you can't really be a leader. Because if you're not influencing other people, you've got no followers. If you've got no followers, by proxy, you're not a leader. So I get where John's coming from when he says that. Now, as we, as we go through this series... There will be certain subjects and topics that I'll be, be covering. What I want to know from you guys is what do you want to know? So put comments in the, in the box there, whether you're watching live or whether you're watching the replay. I'll see those. And then in the, as we go through this series, I can answer those questions. I can respond in the comments. But also if there's things that, that you've got on your list that I haven't got on my list, then absolutely I want to, to add it because, you know, I, I, I don't know everything. All right, I'm here as a thought partner for you. So let me run through a list of things that I wrote down that I'll be covering in this series. So influence is obviously one of them. Um, leading by example, which is also leading from the front. You know, I read a very good book by Simon Sinek called Leaders Eat Last. And uh, the, there's several other books that I'll be referring to during this series. So um John Maxwell, Leadership Gold, obviously, is one of them. Developing the Leader Within You 2.0 is another one of them. And then I've also got another book that I'll be referencing, which is this one called Gapology. And this is about how winning leaders close performance gaps. So all of these things are, I'll probably be referring to, um, but I'll be bringing my experiences from my UK leadership, plus also uh, the Disney leadership and the, some of the work that I did with... Um, with them and their sort of methodologies and thought processes, which really all blend in with, with what I think anyway. So one of the other things I'll be talking about is how you build engaged teams. Okay, because again, a leader is nothing without a team, right? If you haven't got a follower, at least a follower, you're not a leader, right? You may be a manager, but that's another question, right? Is a manager a leader? Not always. We'll talk about communication. Big subject. Right, how do you communicate to your teams? How do you communicate to your partners? How do you communicate to your peers and your boss? How do you make sure that the message that you're encoding is decoded in the correct way? I also want to talk about developing talent. Okay, so that's developing the team underneath you bringing people through as a leader you should be developing someone to to succeed you so that you can then move on to the next level you know sadly a lot of leaders or managers think that they don't want to do that because they feel threatened by their, their their team if they're developing but as it say on my my business release your unconscious it's developing leaders everywhere that's what i want to do the more leaders we've got the better we'll be as a society I'll talk about my three-step process of purpose, vision, and strategy. 
Right now, I've got a course for individuals called Your Third Quarter, where obviously I work on purpose, vision and strategy, but it works in business too, exactly the same way. In fact, all strategies work in business and personal life exactly the same way. You've got to be intentional about employing them. We'll talk about employee excellence. Why is that important? We'll cover that. We'll talk about delivering exceptional customer service and why that's important. I want to touch on the subject of how to conduct one-on-one -on -one sessions and performance reviews. I'll maybe touch on how to run an effective team meeting or a meeting in general. But in this instance, if we're talking about leaders, a team meeting, and then we'll talk about active listening. All right, so those are just some of the subjects that, that I've got down that, that, that are on my course um, syllabus for, for November and things that I want to, want to touch on. So I'll be doing these Facebook Lives. So I want to gather your feedback. I want to gather your opinions. And then what I'll be doing as well is I'll be creating a free video series that goes through maybe the top six topics. Uh, and I'll do like... 15 to 30 minute video training sessions that you'll be able to sign up to get free. So say I anticipate there being four to six of those um, that will be available soon. So let's think about active listening. All right, some of you may have been on Mark Cole's call this morning and uh, this is one of the things that Mark was talking about on, on this call is leadership. And he threw out some stats there and um, I can't remember the exact research, but basically it was it was going through um, a fact of, of how how much time we're listening and and hearing things and taking notice of things and remembering things and that it basically worked out um, that it came down to actually things that we listen to and we remember each day is about three and a half percent of what we hear. That's staggering, right? Mark put it into context as well. He talked about if you work in an eight-hour day, that basically translates to eight minutes that you're actually actively listening and remembering what people said. So what are you doing for the other seven hours and 42 minutes? Okay? So think about that with listening. You can hear, but are you listening? I was always told when, when I was going through my sales training in the sort of 80s and 90s um, that we've got two of these and one of these and we should use them in that proportion. So two ears, one mouth. Which means you should be listening at least twice as much as you're talking. Um, in fact, Mark Cole actually put it into a different context. He said that you should be listening 80% of the time and talking just 20% of the time. Hey Jay, good morning my friend, uh, walking the streets of Springfield, um, it's good to, to have you, hopefully it's a nice day there and uh, you, you're not getting too hot or too wet, I don't know, so uh, it's good to, good to have you with us, so thank you for that. Okay, so, active listening, so think about that, All right, how well do you listen? You know, a lot of people will say, if, if only people would shut up, they'd hear what I'm saying. Well, well, you're not listening. How many of us actually jump to conclusions and start answering things before we've actually heard the question? Part of this comes into interviewing strategies as well, right? When you, you're listening to an interview, you've got, before you go into an interview, or even a meeting, a one-on-one -on -one meeting with your, your manager or another meeting, you generally think in advance what's going to happen, right? You're prejudging what's going to happen. That's a dangerous thing to do. But it's something that, to be honest, we probably all do. Now, to be able to practice active listening, you need to get rid of that. You need to get rid of that habit because that will bring you down. The Henry Ford quote that I, that I love and, and repeat over and over is whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're usually right. 
that applies to these situations as well. If you go into a situation thinking that something's going to be happen, going to happen, or thinking that someone is going to say something a particular way, that's the way you'll hear it. Even if it's said in a completely different way, that's the way you'll hear it. In the sales world, we used to call it prejudgment. You know, we would talk about it when you see somebody walk onto the, the forecourt, if they were dressed scruffily and they didn't look like they had much money, a lot of salespeople would dismiss that person. Now, I always remember I, I, when I was serving Kirby vacuum cleaners in the mid-1980s um, in a, a town called Loughborough near, near Leicester, I went into a, a, a Jaguar dealer with my boss. My boss was a millionaire. But he wasn't dressed like a millionaire that day. We went into that dealership. We walked around the forecourt. We walked around the showroom. Nobody came and spoke to us. Because we weren't dressed smart. We didn't look like we had money. The fact is, he could have bought three, four, five, six of those cars cash. And actually he did the next week at a Mercedes dealer. You know, I also remember my experience in, in a cars dealership in um, a, a little, little town called Corf Mullen near Poole in Dorset. It was a Nissan dealer at the time. And uh, we, we were selling the, the Nissan Micras, which are the small baby cars. We don't have them here in the States. And we had a special offer on that, that we, we had this car for £5,995. Right, it was a special offer. Gentleman was walking around the forecourt. Again, he was carrying a, a plastic carrier bag, just an anorak. Just, again, didn't look like he had um, had a penny. Came in, started talking to him. I was always told not to prejudge people, so I don't. So I started talking to him, listening to him. Listening to what he wanted. And it wasn't long before he said, yeah, I want that car. I went, okay, how do you want to pay for it? He lifted up the carrier bag, put it on the desk, and inside the carrier bag was cash. So you never know. You never know what people are going to say. You never know what people are thinking unless you take the time to listen. Okay, so ask questions. Ask open-ended questions, then sit back, shut up, and listen to the answer. So those of you that are coaches out there, that works with your coaching clients. If you're going out to do a, um, a proposal for a company, Ask the question, then listen. Listen to what the company says. Don't go in there with a preconceived conceived idea that you're going to offer them this program, this program, and this program. It may not fit their needs. So listen. Ask questions. Listen to the answer. If you need to, ask a clarification question. What you should also be doing is repeating back what you hear just to make sure that you've understood the right thing. How many of you do that? You know, another good, good suggestion that, I, that I've got when you, you're talking to teams is, is when you relay something to them or you're asking them to do something. Don't assume that they understand exactly what it is you want, even if they say, yep, I've got that. Ask them the question. Do you mind repeating back? Tell me in your own words what it is that, that, that you're going to be doing. And listen to what they say. It may be they've got it right. It may be they've got it completely wrong. Or partly wrong. That's your opportunity to make sure that you dot the I's and cross the T's. As a leader, that's your responsibility. But if you don't actively listen, how are you going to know that? So practice active listening. It is actually a skill and it takes time. It takes time to, to master that skill. There's a time when it will come almost naturally but you still need to keep working on it. Think of it like a muscle. Right? Any of these skills and actions that, we, that, we, that we, we need to use in our daily life are like muscles. If you don't exercise them, they die. Never take them for granted. 
keep stretching it. John will talk about the law of the rubber band. Okay, it's the same with our minds. If you stretch it, it will never go back to its original form. But you need to keep expanding that. You need to keep stretching it. Pushing those boundaries. Helping people to be the best they can be. Now guys, if you haven't tuned in to, to Jay Goff, who's listening now, our, our show on a, a Wednesday night at 7.15, I suggest you tune in. It's on this, this uh, Facebook page. It's also Jay shares it on his Facebook page. I'll put up a notification to let you know it's coming. But we have a great conversation for 45 minutes on all sorts of subjects, leadership and influence. Right, some of the things I'm going to cover again during this show, but there should be some things that, that maybe are different. And that's great. Why we do that? We learn and we grow off each other. And we learn and we grow from the interactions we have with our listeners. So that's Wednesdays at 7.15. Coming up at the top of the hour at 3 o'clock, I've got my um, weekly series with Jake Kuzak, the 11-year-old uh, youngest certified John Maxwell team member. Now we, we call that Jake's journey and we've been doing that since March. We've been following Jake through his leadership development journey. Yes, at 11 years old. Why? Because he wants to grow, he wants to develop, he wants to influence other people and add value to other people at 11 years old. You know, I wish I'd had that mindset at 11 years old. But it's not too late for any of us. We can learn from each other. So again, three o'clock, tune in for Jake's journey. We're covering John Maxwell's book, Sometimes You Win, Sometimes You Learn. Okay, Jake covers the teen version. You know, and I, uh, He's really teaching, it's Jake's journey. I just facilitate it. Sometimes I, I help him. Now, I will say uh, Jake is, has not been very well. So hopefully he'll be, he'll be available for, um, for the show at three o'clock. And uh, as, as Jay says, Jake is phenomenal. Yes, he is. He is. Um, if Jake's not available, then you'll put up with me and I'll just, I'll just go over a few things. But hopefully Jake will be available. He's not told me he's not. So tune in at three o'clock and, uh, and watch that. And again, if you're watching the replay and it's gone three o'clock, the replay of Jake's journey will be on. So I hope you enjoy this series. Put the comments in there if there's anything particularly you want to, to me to talk about, any questions you've got, um, any thoughts that you just want me to, to um, be a thought partner with, more than happy to do so. All right, that's what I'm here for. And please share this with as many people as you can. I want to be able to influence the world. All right, I'm not John Maxwell, not yet, but I've still got time. All right, so enjoy your afternoon. Uh, Jay, enjoy walking the streets of Springfield. You're probably singing some Elvis songs as you're going along. Um, thanks for joining in and thanks everybody and I will catch up with you at three o'clock. Bye for now.